Amen. God bless you all tonight. Sister Wilson, we will thank you so much for your prayer, and we will accept that prayer as a prayer of all the petitions that have been posted up here tonight. We thank God for each and every one of you that are here tonight. We want to encourage you to go ahead and post up your prayers so that we can pray for you as well, so that we all can join in. Thanking God for each and every one of you coming by here tonight. Thanking God for the end of another day to where he's blessed us. And we are here at the end of it. We can look back on it now. and We can see all the way that God has led us even in this day. Amen. Amen. I thank God for the beautiful song that was played there just now as well. Amen. The song says we ought to bow down and worship him. Simply meaning we ought to be willing to humble ourselves. Scripture says, if we humble ourselves up under the mighty hand of God, that in due time, he will lift us up. Amen. So I thank God for that. I thank God for just who he is. And I thank God that he is as he's a resting place. Amen. He's a place to where when you when you the, the Bible says he's like a, a an eagle that spreads its wings and gathers all his chicks in. And there's no safer place for the uh, baby chicks to be than up under the. The, the feathers, the wings, amen, and that's the way God does. And when we get there, when we get in his, uh, up under his covering, when we get in the bosom of the Lord, amen, it's, it's a place where you can exhale. It's a place where you can uh, set all your worries aside. That's, that's what we try to do here at Come Aside. We try to make this uh, the end place. No matter how bad your, your day has been, we try to make this the resting place, amen. And so I want to encourage you, go ahead and share on your page and Encourage somebody else to come over here tonight. Somebody else that might have been going through, somebody else that might have been struggling, and somehow, some way, the Lord allowed you to know their struggle. And you are going to be the one tonight that intercedes on their behalf. So why don't you go ahead and encourage them to come on over here and join us on tonight? Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you tonight. Let's 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 move on over as you post up your prayer request. We're going to move on over here to just a little something that the Lord shared, shared with me earlier today. and I'm just going to share with you uh, here, if you don't mind. I'm going to ask you to open up your Bibles to the book of Romans, Paul's letter to the Romans. And I'm going to ask you to open it up to chapter number eight. And we are going to look there. But Tonight, I want you to focus on uh, just this heading here tonight, that we are destined for his image. Amen. Somebody, somebody uh, uh, tell somebody else that we are destined for his image. Uh, as I've said many times, and I want to say again here tonight, God does, never does anything without a purpose. Amen. The Bible says in the beginning, God or in the beginning, uh, when, when, when God uh, set forth the plan of man, it says in the beginning, God. And then when God set forth the plan, he had purpose. Amen. The scripture calls him the the uh, alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's already been at the end and he was at the beginning. Amen. And God had plan. Amen. He, he had planned to be carried out all the way to the end. And what I want us to see here tonight is that God has a plan for you and for me. Understand, it's not a plan that he's putting together. It's not a plan that he's yet trying to figure out. But he has a plan that is already in place for you and for me. Anybody remember uh, Jeremiah? Remember what he what the Lord told Jeremiah? Amen. When he called Jeremiah and Jeremiah was a bit apprehensive, Jeremiah couldn't understand why God would call him being so young. And, and the scripture said that God spoke some uh, a word into Jeremiah. He spoke some knowledge into Jeremiah. In other words, he, he allowed Jeremiah in on something that Jeremiah didn't know. And in Jeremiah chapter one and verse five, the Lord said, listen, Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you. Before I formed you, uh, Jeremiah, before I even crafted you, before I created you, I already knew you. 
In other words, when you had no ability to even know yourself, he said, I knew you, amen, and I knew you before you even came out of your mother's womb, I sanctified you, I set you apart, and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. God said, Jeremiah, I want to let you in on something. When I, even before I made you, I had purpose. Somebody hear and understand. God, God makes purpose, and then he makes somebody to feel that purpose, amen, that he made. God didn't just throw you and me out here in this world. God allowed you and I to be in this world. But when he put us here, he had a preordained purpose for you and for me, even as he did with Jeremiah. And that's what we want to look at here tonight, if you don't mind. Open your Bibles over to uh, Romans chapter 8, and let's re-examine what the Apostle Paul is saying here, beginning in verse number 28. And keep in mind what we are talking about. We're, we're talking about uh, being destined for his image. You are, there's a destiny that you and I have. There's a, a destiny and a, a purpose that you and I have. And, and tonight, uh, I believe that the apostle is going to tell us that, that God has a purpose and a plan for you and I. And, and listen to what he says that purpose and that plan is. He says, now, we know, this is the Apostle Paul talking to the church at Rome, and he says, we know that all things work together for good. Listen to what he said, for them that love God. He says, we, we know this. We have no doubt about this. We, in other words, we, we understand these things. Brothers and sisters, we, we have to uh, 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 go into every situation and everything that happens into our life. We have to go into it with an understanding the understanding that God is in control, the understanding that nothing can happen in my life that God does not allow, and that God does not know. Therefore, he says, uh, we know that all things, no matter what things it is, no matter my situation, no matter how bad it is, no matter how big it is, no matter what, he said, all things somehow, some way, because you and I are in God's hand, because he is the Alpha and the Omega, because he has the whole world in his hand, he said, we know that all things work together for good. He said, to them that love God. Keep that in mind. He didn't say for everybody. Everybody doesn't have a, 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 good, a good ending coming out, everybody, uh, understanding what I'm saying. He said, but we know that for them that love God, all things somehow, some way are going to work out for good. Does that mean we're not going to go through the pain? Does that mean we're not going to go through the heartache? Does that mean that, that somehow we're going to get around what Jesus said, where he said, in this world, you're going to have tribulations? No, that's not what it means. But what it means is that, that at the end of this thing, in the middle of this thing, God has a purpose and God has a plan. That doesn't mean that we're not going to have to go through. He said, but I want you to understand, he said that this purpose and this plan of God is for them that love God. That's the key. You, you must love God. He said to them, look at what he said, the latter part, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Remember what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about God has a, a purpose. God has a plan and God has a plan determined for you and for me who love God. Look at what he said here. In the, verse 29, he's going to let us in on something. He said, for whom he did foreknow. In other words, whom he knew before. Remember what he told Jeremiah? Jeremiah, before I put you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you had the ability to know yourself, Jeremiah, I knew you. In other words, Jeremiah, I, not only did I know you, but Jeremiah, I had purpose for you even before I placed you in your mother's womb. And listen to what he said. He said, for whom he did foreknow. Brothers and sisters, that tells me that God knew me before he even placed me in my mother's womb. It tells me that God knew you. It ought to tell you that, that God knew you even before you had the ability to know yourself. In other words, you when you was birthed into this world, when you, when you first was birthed from your mother, God knew you even before then. Come on, we didn't know you. The world didn't know you until you was birthed. But God says he foreknew or he before knew you and he before knew me. But not only did he foreknow us, but look at what he said. He said he also 
predestinated or he predetermined. Amen. He he pre-purposed you. He pre-purposed me. What was the purpose of God for you and me? What was the predetermined purpose of God for you and for me, brothers and sisters? Well, look at what he said. He said, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Did you hear that? He said, God's purpose for you and God's purpose for me, every one of us that is through Christ Jesus now birthed into, born into the family of God as children of God. He said, God's predetermined, God's pre-purpose plan for you and me was that we would be conformed or changed and molded into the image of his son. That's God's purpose for you and me, brothers and sisters. That's God's ultimate image for you and me, his ultimate plan for you and me. God's purpose and God's plan has has never changed from the moment in Genesis uh, 1 and 26 to where he said, he said, let us make man into our image, into our likeness. God's purpose has never stopped. It's ne- it, when God made Adam, that's exactly how Adam was. When God made Adam, Adam was made in the image and the likeness of God. But after Adam fell, the scripture said that Adam had a son, and the scripture says, and this son was born into the image of Adam. He carried Adam's likeness and Adam's image, which was a sinner. And understanding. That that did not stop God from the purpose and the plan of God, which was to create every one of his children, amen, into his image. And the Bible says, speaking of you and me, all of us, the Bible says to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And God's purpose and God's plan is for you and for me who are children of God through Christ Jesus. God's purpose and God's plan is to conform us, to mold us, to shape us into the image of his son, Jesus the Christ. No matter no matter how black you were when he found you, no matter how how black you'll stain, no matter how messed up you were. God's purpose is to shape you into the image of his son. God's ultimate goal for you and me, brothers and sisters, is that when he look at you and me, he see Jesus. Oh, come on. That's the reason that that we the Bible, Paul says we go from glory to glory. Every day, God is still molded. Every day, he is still the potter working on this clay. And his ultimate goal, just as he said, for whom he did foreknew, God predestined you to be into the image of his son, even before you were birthed in this world. Therefore, he knew the mess you was going to go through. He knew the mess you was going to get into. He knew how deep you was going to get into it. He knew how strong it was going to get a hold of you. But brothers and sisters, don't give up. Brothers and sisters, hold on because the potter is still working on you. Come on. Like the song say, he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Amen. He's still working on me. Why? Because he's got a purpose and he's got a plan and it has never stopped. Before he placed me in this world, he he determined, he predetermined that, that at the end of this thing, I would be into the image. I would be conformed into the image of his dear son. He predestinated me to be conformed or to be molded and shaped into the image of his son. Brothers and sisters, that's the same for you and me. All of us who name the name of Jesus. That's the reason that 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 sin. Come on. uh, it, it, It tries its best to knock us down. But when you when you love God, as the scripture said, that's the reason that 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 when you sin, when you fall, when you fail, that's the reason that that you feel so guilty. That's the reason that that shame come on you so hard because you are no longer who you used to be. You're no longer the person that that, that used to love those things that had you bound. That's not who you are anymore. And just because you failed, just because you slipped, that don't mean that that's who you are. No, you failed and you slipped. And the reason you feel guilty is because God is working on you. 
The reason you feel guilty is because you don't want to be that way. But brothers and sisters, be determined, understand, and keep it in your mind that it's been predetermined. You have been predestinated to be conformed into the image of Jesus the Christ. It's your destiny. It's my destiny. It's the destiny of everybody that names the name of Jesus. Listen to what he said. I want to read it again. For whom he did foreknow. He knew you before. He knew you was before you, you even entered into this world, before you were so messed up by this world, before sin grabbed a hold to you and tore you up and messed you up, before it used you, abused you, didn't left your lander. He knew you was going to go through all of that. But he did not let that change his mind as to his predetermined goal, his predetermined outcome for you and for me. His purpose is to still mold you into the image of his son. The apostle John said it this way, 1 John 3 and 2. Listen to what he said. He said, behold, now are we the sons of God. Stop right there just for a second. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say in the future we're going to be the sons of God. He didn't say just a little while longer. Come on, when when he finished molding and when he shaped, when he finished shaping you, that's when you're going to be the sons of God. No, he said, be loved now, right now. As many as uh, uh, received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. The moment you called out on Jesus the Christ, the moment you received him as Lord and Savior, you became a child of God. You became a member of the family of God. And John says, beloved, now, right now. Pastor Hill, you mean right now and I'm still stuck in this mess? I'm, I still got these cravings. I, I still slip and fall every now and then. I'm telling you what the word of God says. The word of God says now, right now, you are a child of God. But then look at what he says. He says, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. In other words, the outcome hasn't happened yet. He, he's still moving you toward what you're going to be. Keep that in mind. Tell yourself when you fall, I'm not finished yet. He's not finished with me yet. I, I, I'm not a finished product right now. I'm still a work. Come on, in progress. You, you got to remind yourself of that. When you fall, get up and do the best you can to dust yourself off and, and go on because you, you got to remind yourself, he's not finished with me yet. I'm a, I'm a work in progress. He says, it does not yet appear. In other words, you can't see the outcome. Brothers and sisters, all we can do right now is, is hope and pray right now to be able to see what I'm going to be. I can't even see my finished product. I can't imagine what I'm going to look like when he threw with me. But, but, but he gives us an idea here. John says, it does not yet appear what we shall be. Look at what he said. But we know. That when he shall appear, he's talking about when the Lord Jesus, when Jesus returned, when Jesus come back, he says, when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Did you hear that? I, I, I've never seen Jesus as the disciples saw him in his glory. In John 17, Jesus prayed and said, Father, I pray that they be where I am in heaven with you so that they can see my glory. I want to see his glory one day. And the Bible, John says, we, it, it don't appear yet what we're going to be. The finished product of what you and I are going to look like, we, we, he, he said we can't see it yet. He said, but what we do know is that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Look at the last part. He says, for or because we shall see him as he is. Brothers and sisters, we're going to be made into the likeness, into the image of the very son of God. And that's why the apostle said, whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. It's been predetermined, brothers and sisters. No, nothing can change that. God, who cannot lie, promised that he is going to 
to finish the work that he started in you and that he started in me. And we can't see the outcome yet. But what we do know is that to those who love him, come on, to those that love him, he predestinated us to be conformed to the image of his son. One day, I'm going to look just like him. One day, I'm going to walk just like him. One day, I'm going to talk just like him. Come on. Today ain't that day. But I'm working toward it. The way I'm working toward it is I'm, I'm allowing him to mold and to shape and to do whatever it is that he wants to do. Because he is the potter. I am the clay. Brothers and sisters, we are destined for his image. We're destined to look like Christ. And no devil in hell, no devil in this earth can stop that from happening. Paul said it's for all those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Brothers and sisters, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much for stopping by here. Thank you for tuning in. And I just want to encourage you tonight. Listen, don't give up. What you do is you, you rest in God and allow God to do that thing that he has determined in himself that he is going to do. Trust him. He's going to get you where it is that he's promised that he's going to get you to. I just encourage you tonight. 